Hey, this is Ina, in with Ina the Fight Back. And today I want to briefly talk about the Russian Revolution of 1917, which is, of course, probably one of the most important events in history for any communist. And we often, what exactly made the Russian Revolution of 1917? What were the forces and actors involved? And this is not going to be an extensive video on the subject, because I have talked about the Russian Revolution before, and admittedly, there are thousands of books out there about it. I myself probably have probably around a hundred on the Russian Revolution, which I haven't read them all. But I'm like, what, what can we whittle it down to almost to say how the Russian Revolution was made? And I was looking through some of these books, and I did find it uh, a part of a lecture that Leon Trotsky gave in 1932 in Copenhagen, Denmark. I know a lot of you don't like Trotsky, and that's fine. But he did write a very excellent history on the Russian Revolution of 1917. And this lecture is pretty much a summation of that book. And he gives pretty much eight points about what made the Russian Revolution. What were the, How was the revolution made? What were the factors, objective and subjective, involved? And to me, it actually sums it up quite nicely. So you can almost have a checklist there. So what were these points? What made the Russian Revolution of 1917? Trotsky lists them. And the first five are they're pretty much the long-term causes. And let's look at them. We have, the number one, the rotting away of the old ruling classes. This would be the nobility, the monarchy, and its uh, bureaucracy. So the czarist system, as it were. And it's being rotted away by the development of new, more modern forces, which are, are in the other points as well. And absolutism, which it was the czar's system, is kind of out of place in Europe at this point. If we were to compare czar's Russia to France, France, whatever else you may say about it, in 1900, it was a much more freer country than czar's Russia. So absolutism is kind of rotting away. These classes are old, more of they're backward. So what else do we have? Although capitalism is developing in Russia during this period, this, this is not quite sufficient. Because, point two, we have the political weakness of the bourgeoisie. If we were to compare the bourgeoisie of Russia to, say, France in 1789, the bourgeoisie was very much, in France, a leading force in its respect in that revolution. It was pushing for radical reforms. It was pushing against the old absolutism of the French monarchy. In Russia, this was not so. The bourgeoisie in Russia, symbolized perhaps by the Cadet Party, the Constitutional Democrat Party, was more afraid of the proletariat and the peasantry than of the monarchy. And when revolutionary storms erupted in Russia, they were willing to back the more reactionary classes, such as the nobility. And they pretty much had no real influence among the masses, whether workers or peasants. They were pretty. So unlike France, where the bourgeoisie was in many respects a leading force in the revolution, this was not so in Russia. And the third point is the revolutionary character of the agrarian question. And this means Russia in 1861 had officially abolished serfdom. But land was not re redistributed to the peasants. They suffered under heavy weight of old debt. They could not really feed themselves at times. And they suffered horribly. They did not have modern um, agricultural equipment. And they were hungry for land. The nobility still had a lot of the land despite the fact that there had been the abolition of serfdom. So the peasants were living rather badly and they were hungry for land. And you could see this, in, for instance, earlier in France, the peasantry wanted land. And later, no doubt inspired partly by the Russian Revolution, in the Chinese Revolution, the peasants there wanted land. They did in Russia as well. And this would be an explosive character in the Russian Revolution. Number four, the revolutionary character of the oppressed nationalities of the Russian Empire. By the time of the Russian Revolution, a minority, I believe, of 49% of the people of the Russian Empire were actually Russian. 
there were other nationalities that made up the empire. Poles, Latvians, Lithuanians, Estonians, Finns, Georgians, Armenians, and of course the um, Kazakhs, Turkmen, all these different nationalities. And in many respects, they were subjected to Russification. They could not speak their own languages. They could not have their own schools. They could not practice their own culture or religion. We also have the fact that, for instance, the Jews of the Russian Empire were had to live in certain regions and they had they suffered greatly. And these people were hungry for change. They didn't want to live with their religion couldn't be practiced, or where they or where they couldn't speak their own language. So that was adding to the the fervent of the Russian Revolution. And number five, and Trotsky identifies this as the most important of these, or one of the most important, is the significant social burdens weighing on the working class. The fact that the working class in Russia not only suffered from great poverty and misery, but was also concentrated to a higher degree in large and heavy industry. So, in the United States, I believe, well, to put it like this, a higher percentage of Russian workers were concentrated in heavy industry than workers in the United States. And of course, workers in higher, in say, heavy industry, more concentrated, are going to develop identity as a collective class. And of course, not only suffering poverty, misery, low wages, and exploitation, they're going to want to change that. And the fact that they can't strike, that unions are illegal, and that they have really no political representation, they're going to demand change. And of course, throughout, pretty much picking up towards the 1880s into the 1890s, Russian workers are very much in the vanguard of any change in Russia. They're leading strikes, insurrections, all sorts of mass movements are coming from the working class. So these would be the five long-term factors of the Russian Revolution. Well, what do we have for more immediate? Well, for number six, we have Trotsky identifies the Revolution of 1905, which was he, or he, actually Lenin says, was the dress rehearsal for 1917. The people were out in the streets, they were active, they were learning to struggle, they were practicing democracy, as it were. And the peasants were starting to seize land, the workers were striking. But one thing that came out of the 1905 revolution was the Soviet, the Workers' Council. And the Soviet, Trotsky identifies as the proletariat united front form, the form of the revolution, the new state that would supplant the Tsarist state. And of course in 1917, one of the chief rallying cries of the revolutionaries in the Bolshevik party would be all power to the Soviets. And we have in 19... And that's, so that's number six. But number seven is the imperialist war, i.e. World War I, which Russia lost. And they lost really poorly. They had millions of deaths. They lost large swaths of territory, casualties, utter devastation, because they were going up against Germany. If not the most advanced country in Europe, certainly one that was more than prepared to fight the Russian Empire, man for man, as it were. And the imperialist war sharpens all these contradictions. The nobility is suffering. You know, a lot of their prestige and their power is being rotted away. The bourgeoisie is rallying to the nobility, rallying to the war effort. Peasants aren't getting any land. In fact, they're the frontline soldiers in the war. And the oppressed nationalities well, they're not getting freedom from this war. And the proletariat, they're being worked like dogs. They're, a lot of them are starving in the major cities. So all of these contradictions are being sharpened. And added with the dress rehearsal of 1905, when the chance comes, when there's actually a red riot, as it were, in the capital of Petrograd, the, pop, the czarist system crumbles. And suddenly... The masses are, because of the contradictions of the war, formerly backward masses who really weren't involved in the struggle, you know, they're seeing, you know, the nature of imperialism, the czarist system, all the social weights, all of these contradictions I've spoken of earlier, and they're just, and they're acting. 
Well, all of these conditions, all of the seven conditions I have given to you, they were enough to, to bring about a revolution, certainly. But they were not enough to secure victory. And Trotsky identifies one more point that was necessary to give, bring the revolution to victory. And that's point eight. And that is the Bolshevik Party. A party of committed activists who, who through their heroic class leadership, through Lenin and everyone on down pretty much, they were at the forefront for every democratic demand. They were for getting rid of the monarchy, obviously. They were for proletariat power, not bourgeois power. They were for land reform, of course, seizing the estates without compensation to the landlords, land to the tiller. So they were for the end to the imperialist war, peace. They were for land. And they were for, you know, giving a better life to the working class, bread, because many people were starving. And, of course, workers' control of factories, To And they were also for new popular forms of self-organization, for instance, Soviets. Not only was peace, land, and bread a Bolshevik slogan during 1917, but all power to the Soviets. And the Bolshevik party was willing to act upon these. They were a party of activists, that deeply embedded in the masses, whether in the workers or the soldiers, and they were pushing the revolution forward, and they were willing to embark upon a new socialist project. And these eight factors, the rotting away of the old ruling classes, the political weakness of the bourgeoisie, the revolutionary character of the agrarian question, the revolutionary character of the problem of the oppressed nationalities, significant social burdens weighing on the proletariat, the revolution of 1905, the imperialist war, and the Bolshevik party, all of this together produces the Russian Revolution of 1917. And I believe Trotsky in a rather simple and condensed form, kind of allows us to see what exactly brought this about. So this is Ina saying, until next time.